What's the word, y'all? Welcome back. Um, <laughs> What a day. What a game. I know Adam Silver is sitting in his office or I guess at home because it's super late. And he's super happy and super upset with himself, man. Super happy because the play-in was a success. We had battle after battle. Down to the wire in so many of these games. But upset with himself because he has Steph Curry and LeBron in the playoffs and decided he wanted to be extra. <laughs> And one of them didn't make it, man. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you are new. My allergies have been kicking my butt all day long, so excuse me if my voice sounds a little bit different. Let's talk about this game. Oh, my God, was it a banger. So you remember in the last episode when we were talking about Lakers versus Warriors, I made it a very prominent point that the Warriors had no business being competitive against the Lakers because they don't have that much talent. And, well, it was showcased on national TV again today that they just don't have enough talent to be as good. And, I mean, this is why when Steph Curry didn't play last season, they were the worst team in the league, and now, you know, they're fighting for a playoff spot. But they had to run what's technically 8-D. But they put Michael Mulder in the game, and the team, the opposite team, went on a huge run. So they run in 7 deep. And a few of these 7 just feel like they were just running and doing cardio. It was the Steph Curry show, which is always great. It's unfortunate. Um, as a, just a just a fan that likes viewing the game that Steph Curry season in today, but I'm super happy to see the Memphis Grizzlies get into the playoffs, and we'll talk about that in a second. So Steph Curry show the Draymond Green defensive clinic again. He hit a three, and you would have thought he had never hit a three before in his life, and I had to think that's kind of true at the same. You know, like he was so amped up at this one three, and it was it was a timely three. I give him that. Um, but he was so amped up on that one. He ends with the triple double, but I know that don't matter to him because they didn't get this win. That was it. And I know Wiggins ended with 22. You're like, Kenny, Wiggins ended with a 22. Honestly, his defense was good today. On the other side, bro, that 22 don't mean nothing to me. Because there are a few plays down the stretch where you like, Wiggs, bro. Wiggs, bro. And I, I swear to God, I be feeling like Wiggins be getting picked on. But he makes it about, like he does it for, like last episode when we were talking about them versus the Lakers. I gave Wiggs a lot of love because he played great defense on LeBron. He had some big shots. He did this and that. But as many times as he does that, he has two times as many moments where you're like, bro, what are you doing? Late in the fourth quarter, the Warriors are trying to come back and make this run. At one point, the Grizzlies in the fourth quarter had a 96, 97% chance of winning according to, like, y'all know that meter by win probability, and then the Warriors came back. But in that comeback, Wiggins had an open layup, and he smoked it. Okay, no big deal. Get back on defense. And then we get to the shot. I don't know how many people are talking about the shot because, again, the, the game just ended. John Moran is on my screen right now doing a post-game interview. I wish I was listening, but I'm not. I don't know how many people are talking about this shot. But it was the most ugly shot, the most, like, where is your IQ shot I've seen in a very long time. Situational. Look, it's I think at this point they're down by, like, two. I have to go back and rewatch. They're down by, like, two. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Grayson Allen just hit his second straight three in overtime. He ain't even really play in the third or fourth quarter, but he comes to overtime, hit two big threes. We'll talk again. We'll, we'll mention and talk about the Memphis Grizzlies side of things in a second. Wiggins comes down court. If, don't get Steph. If, if Steph Curry or Draymond doesn't touch the ball on a possession, I'm just automatically assuming that it's going to end in a bad shot. And it did. This man hit the opposite side of the backboard on an open three. And you're like, yeah, it's over with. It's a, like, where is the mindset that I have to take this shot six seconds into the possession without Steph or Draymond setting up any kind of set? You know what I'm saying? It's just, ooh, that's just, that right there. That right there really hurt. That right there really hurt. Um, Jordan Poole, I know Jordan Poole ended up with one of the most costly turnovers of the game, Um, laid down a stretch, but he was amazing for them. Like, he was the third best player for the team today. Um, Just, just. He, you, you can tell that he's been working under Steph Curry a lot this season. And they were talking about him in the broadcast. Um, I didn't even really realize that he was in the G League bubble. And the fact that he went from the G League bubble to playing like crunch time minutes in a winner go home situation is a testament to how hard he has worked this season. But you can tell he's been working a lot with Steph Curry because he does not stop moving. There were a couple possessions in this game where he got the ball, gave it back to Draymond, cut back door, got the ball back, looked for somebody else, jumped up in the air, made another pass. You can tell he has been working with Steph on that off ball move. 
movement and movement within things. I think he's going to play a crucial part to their team next season. Um, and they got some decisions to make this offseason because, well, if I want to go back to earlier in the season, um, before James Wiseman went down, he didn't look so great with the team. Um, uh, you can make an argument that next year he'll be better with a little bit more um, – because I, I, guess, I guess he played a single-digit amount of college games, then got suspended. There was no summer league straight into – if I'm not mistaken, he was injured for preseason. So he just came into the NBA with, like, no experience. So I could see year number two him being significantly better. But I can also see a world where the Golden State Warriors look at Steph Curry getting older, look at Draymond Green getting older, look at Klay Thompson coming off a, another significant injury and see the pieces and that, that, that pick that might convey from the Minnesota Timberwolves and look at James Wiseman as a piece and be like, we might want to go out there and do something about it. And not to mention they got the salary cap filler with Andrew Wiggins, so... Wiggins, Wiseman, a pick could potentially get you a player if a team, a good, a good player is on the market this offseason, which we don't know at this point because things just happen like that. I can see a world where they like, you know what, let's just buy into this, this last one last, one last dance <laughs> with the Golden State Warrior dynasty. But to see the Steph Curry, we won't see Steph Curry play basketball for the next couple months. Um, and no playoffs this year. It's it's kind of sad. I would have loved to see them matched up against the Utah Jazz because Steph Curry's the type of guy that can make some things happen. I mean, it had we believe on the court. You know, they were trying to make that eighth put eight C push again. Um, but they end up losing this game. You know what? And though this was close, it didn't feel like they deserved to win this game. Memphis played better. Um, the Golden State Warriors were about as sloppy as can get. When it come when it came to the basketball, and I'm giving a lot of credit to the Memphis Grizzlies because they they did their scouting report. They knew what type of stuff they were trying to run. John Morant was in the passing lanes. Dylan Brooks was amazing defensively. Um, and the worst turned the ball over too many times. They missed too many open shots. It's very very simple stuff there, and just made some bonehead plagues down down the line. Let's talk about Memphis. I've said this on my on, on this show. I've said this on my podcast. I've said this on my YouTube channel. I am extremely jealous of the Memphis Grizzlies as as a Bulls fan, as a, as a fan of a team that has been trying to rebuild for the last four or five years. I am extremely, I mean, extremely jealous of what the Memphis Grizzlies are building or have built so far. Memphis Grizzlies went two years or so with the tank. Obviously. They lucked out dramatically with getting John Moran because they weren't projected to get the second overall pick. They jumped up in the lottery, but good things happen to good people, all right? But it, it's not just about getting John Moran because obviously John Moran is a bona fide stud. He's going to be a superstar in this league. We all can agree on that. But it's like, what What do you do after that? You know, because getting a player, every, every like teams get players all the time. Teams jump up in the lottery all the time and get a player. But it's about building the team around that player that the Memphis Grizzlies has done amazingly. Kyle Anderson, Jonas Valanciunas are the oldest guys on this team, and you would consider them vets, but they're not even that old themselves. You know what I'm saying? But they play with this poise. Kyle Anderson has always been, uh, when he was with the Spurs, everybody knows slow-mo, you know, he he very rarely makes mistakes, and even this year, I know he didn't have an amazing game today offensively. Even this year, he's been coming a more and more complete sh from shooting the ball, and I heard on the broadcast a couple the last time when they were against the the Spurs, that he had a surgery on his shoulder that helped his jump shooting, yada, yada, yada. He's great. Jonas Valanciunas is, other than Ja Morant, is probably their most impactful player. And he didn't even get no burn until the third and the fourth quarter because he was in foul trouble. And some of those fouls may have been uh, somewhat questionable. Adam Silva making that call that he needed Seth Curry and whatever, whatever. Ja Jonas Valanciunas didn't even play the game that you want Jonas Valanciunas to play. Didn't he have a 2020 game? And now he very rarely played, and they still got the W because the things that they have put around John Moran. When I was on J.J. Reddick's podcast, we talked for like five minutes about the Memphis Grizzlies because they have so many players. We talk about next man up mentality with a lot of different teams, a lot of different organizations. More Like um, the Toronto Raptors have always had that DNA. Oh, man, my guy is out. Okay, somebody else. The DeLon Wright is coming in because DeMar DeRozan is out, yada, yada. Memphis is this right now. J Jonas Valanciunas, Jaron Jackson Jr., your two bigs go out because of foul trouble and because Jaron wasn't really having a great game. Foul trouble, and guess what? Didn't really matter. Xavier Tillman, a rookie, comes in and plays the biggest minutes, the biggest game of his NBA career. He was everywhere. And every, everybody's going to talk about the shot he hit in the corner, which, which is an amazing shot. But deeper than that, he was everywhere. The amount of times I feel like he was just in the play for an offensive rebound that he may not have got the offensive rebound, but he was the catalyst behind the offensive rebound, it's crazy. 
those are the type of things that I'm jealous about the Memphis Grizzlies because, yes, you hit the John Morant pick, but you also hit the Desmond Bain pick, the, the Xavier Henry pick, the DeAnthony Melton signing, or was it a trade? I don't remember. The trade for Grayson Allen. Grayson Allen was a part of the Mike Conley trade, and people were like, oh, he's just a throw-in. He hit two of the biggest shots of the game. He was four for five from three. <laughs> he made the most out of his minutes, and I'm actually surprised looking at this. It felt like um, DeAnthony Melton played more minutes than just nine and a half, but only nine and a half minutes. They played amazing, and John Morant doing what he did. Him hitting five threes is insane. Again, teams, for the next couple years of his career, teams aren't going to allow him to shoot. But if he's doing it like this, it may not be the next couple years. You know what I'm saying? If I'm, I know <laughs> he's not hitting five. He probably won't hit five threes at all in the potential seven-game series with the Utah Jazz. But if he continues to put that work in and just becomes a respectable three-point shooter, this man, John Morant, can go from, oh, he's, he's a really good young point guard in the league that we see can be successful, to this is the guy if he could just become an adequate three-point shooter. And now Dylan Brooks. We talked about it last episode. <laughs> Dylan Brooks always, you know what you're getting from him defensively. He's going to clamp up. But you always question what you're getting from him offensively. Today was not an offensive day at all, but his defense is there. I, I, when I was doing my all-defensive team picks, he was on the short list. But his defense is a lot different than some of the other guys that I put on my list. Because if I want one player to lock up one player, Dylan Brooks is on my short list of defenders. When it comes to one-on-one -on -one defense, I want Dylan Brooks in everybody's jersey. But some of the other players that I actually put on my all-defensive team may have been, you know, better help defenders, yada, yada, yada. But one-on-one -on -one defensive players, Dylan Brooks is that guy. Donovan Mitchell's coming back from an injury, and we're going to talk about these series, and now my nose is starting to get itchy. We're going to talk about these series. Um, Donovan Mitchell's coming back from injury. He's going to have his hands full in this series because Dylan Brooks is going to be all in that jersey. 100% all in that jersey. And I, I going into this, I know that um, Brandon Clark didn't play last game. And I had to do some research because I was like, oh, is Brandon Clark injured? Is he injured right now? Uh, turns out he's not. He just completely fell out of rotation. And I can't I can't get mad at, at Coach um, Coach Taylor Jenkins because the guy that was in the rotation had the biggest moments of the game, you know, and Xavier Henry. Um, so I can't get mad about that. Is it Xavier? Xavier? I, had, I went to school with a guy. His name is spelled exactly like this. But he pronounced the X. It was X Xavier. X Xavier. Um, so Brandon Clark, after an amazing rookie season, is completely out of the rotation, which I guess is I guess is okay if the guy they're replacing you is just better. Um, and again, they didn't have even get a good game from Valen Chunis. They didn't get a game from Jaron. They didn't even get a good game from Kyle Anderson, and they beat this team. Now I'm gonna admit I, I'm still picking like Utah in five, maybe Utah in five. Um, but I'm so happy that, I, they, that that one of the youngest teams in the league made the playoffs because it gives hope. It gives hope for some of the other young teams. They're like, bro, we don't necessarily need a super, superstar player to be competitive and to make the playoffs. It's a little bit different than last year. Remember last year when the season got put on hold, the Memphis Grizzlies was in the eighth spot. Get put on hold, and then they go to the bubble. And because Jaron gets down with an injury, this and that, they fall completely out. And now it's the reverse. They jumped up into the playoffs, and here they are. What a game. Adam Silver, congratulations. The, the play-in is here to stay. I don't know how we get these type of production production as far as um, great games, and somebody's like, nah, that was a good test, but we're not coming back to it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what, what a great game. What a great, great game. We'll see Steph Curry again next year. He'll be in MVP conversation again next year, and the team will be better next year. I'm confident in that. But I'm excited to see playoffs start tomorrow. It's a bit weird. Because I have things planned on my agenda, so I might miss some of the games. It's not like me to say that those words together, but it is what it is. Let me know what you think about this game. Um, Taylor Jenkins. Taylor Jenkins. I almost cost him the entire game when Jordan Poole drew a foul that wasn't a foul. And Taylor Jenkins had the challenge, but didn't use it. If they would have lost that game in regulation... Oh, my God, I would have been upset. Ups upset with him. You know what I'm saying? Because he held on to it for the entire game. He didn't use it at all. <laughs> and I know he was probably afraid to lose his timeout, but they had two at the time. I don't know. I, I, I would love to hear a post-game interview about why he did it. I mean, at the end of the day, it didn't matter. But you probably don't go to overtime at all if you challenge that call because it's not a foul. It's an offensive at that moment. Um, anyway, hopefully you enjoyed. Leave a like, subscribe, go watch Called Game, and I'll see y'all soon. Peace.